Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Vegan Pines. Uh, we're on chapter six. Grandma has secrets. Some we're gonna explore ahead, but the house. only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. Yeah, dude. Oh. What time is it? Time to get up! I love his little walk, it's so cute. Hello? Hello? No, no one in- no one in those places. Hello? <gasps> Friends! Didn't we say we were gonna call you? Rola, what on earth is that? Hmm? That ridiculous thing on your head. It's a detective hat. Oh, this? It helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more of those. <laughs> Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear? Yep, whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. We said we were gonna call you guys. Very well. The game is afoot. I thought it was a hand. <laughs> if I were a gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? In the closet. Perhaps where you might least expect it. Rolo flung open the cabinet with confidence. He Aha! Coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. That's a nice little coffee cup, like, or teacup thing that she's got in that cabinet. I just realized that whole, that whole area, I can't word right now. My brain wants to call it either a cabinet and or a bookcase, but where Rolo is at right now, it's got like the plants and it's got like the little tea saucer and everything. And like, it's just, it's very cozy looking. I think it's safe to assume anything that dust, that dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. Okay. Where are we going? Eureka! She lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps the fire going every day, Rolo. Drat! It may already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to ash. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere Gran doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first. No dice, it's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. And I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? Uh, she has her berry bush. Who has ever thought, I'm going to make take this important thing and huck it in a bush? True. Anything else, maybe out of the ordinary? Well, she is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyway, I can't reach the latch. A look of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. Get it! Now that there's three of you guys, you can climb on each other's backs, right? Or shoulders. Alright, Rolo. This is your time to shine. Ah, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed with... Before he could finish, Luca scrambled up Rolo's back. Hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing! <laughs> Stop complaining and hold still. Got it? Cool. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss. But the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Why not check, like, behind or underneath some of the cups and plates? Particularly the ones that are on the stands facing you, because she could have, like, taped the key to the back, you know? Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh hey, let me just yank on this random teacup and As Beck pulled on one of the teacups. It slanted forward with a hollow click. Oh my God, Beck! The Secret rooms began to rustle and slide under its own power. 
Yo! Seems like your grandma has been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret layers. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So which one do we think she is? We're about to find out. I'm gonna go with superhero. I don't think Gran is bad. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe. Oh, wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. Yeah, Rolo. What's this? Jostle each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. Walter? One moment, he just stared at it. Who's Walter? Is that his dad? What you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Mm. Well, are you gonna read it? I... Here, let me help. Swipe the folder from the drawer and Bro. Began through the pages. Be a little more sensitive, though. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of the preeminent scholar in dense documents. And cheeseburgers. Now I want a cheeseburger, man. By all means, proceed. He at a page and mind holding up a monocle. Hmm. Aha, here we are. Follow-up examination of Terence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Willoughby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Looked up with heightened surprise. See? Creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Wait. Willow's finger traced across the page. There's more scribble in the margins. Could could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims the tap water in his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to this report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Scanned through several hmm. more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease or whatever it is progresses so fast. And with his wife's passing, Terence, Terence's condition follows close behind. Exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. Hmm. What does it say next? Mello rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. That's not the middle, then. What? There has to be more. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did it mean, enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? That's, this is bullshit. Slammed the drawer shut. All right, a well. web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Well, she sure kept, has kept herself busy. Uh, is your grand a serial killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town. I mean, if she really is his grandma, or even if she's his mom that got old because of the goo, maybe, then, like, she's probably gonna want to know what's happening with her family. Like, why is the mom missing? And why did the dad die? Who killed him? Because I'm assuming he got murdered and he didn't just die of natural causes, you know? Out of the kindness of her heart. She put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside in a big circle. Sorry, are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on there. Both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Eris has a question mark that's been crossed out. Uh, Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim. <laughs> we don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. Huh. Yeah, I wonder what it- Oh my god, she's got a punching thingy? She been working out! <laughs> bam, 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 bam! 
Look at me. I'm working out too. Dude, I don't know how people do these. I remember like... You don't come into contact with them very often, but I do remember like... Somehow, when I was younger, coming into contact with one of those things and like really trying to hit it with like the rhythm and everything, and I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I'm impressed by people who can. What do we have here? Barrels marked caution, explosive, and jam jars. That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? <laughs> incendiary. Ooh. She wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs, right? Only one way to find out. Are you gonna break one? Casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Okay, I thought he was gonna be like, only one way to find out. Whoosh! We all die. Huckleberries. He smacked his lips. A hint of brown sugar. And ink? What? Rolo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Ew! Aha! Rolo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. <laughs> it's addressed to Mrs. Mrs. Fratelli. A grand jam gram? It says, Last night I used the disguise Eris provided to scout the location. The timing windows window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Aw oh, man, are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. So more bombshell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'd let it slide. I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. <laughs> okay, Rollo. I hope you guys put that note back to not be too suspicious they when she comes back. A worn down old map of Beacon Pines. An old map? Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rolo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fault that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the town at, at the entrance to town. If we follow it. Carefully trace the path with his finger. Where does it go? It leads right to... down at the end point. Town Square? That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Um... Rolo, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on the map has the same symbol as these explosives over here. So... it's not hiding treasure? A real bummer. Rolo, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? The festival! Gulp? Did you just say gulp? This feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the town- near the center of town. She's gonna blow up the festival! Not if we stop her. Oh shit. Oh shit! Uh... What was that? That was someone coming in. Luca looked up from the map. Oh shit! What was that? No, I heard it too. That was the front door. I would get the fuck out of there, or hide. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs. Shh, quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light, and they became statues in the dark. Oh my Overhead, gosh. Creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. So if their little secret pathway door thingy is still open, then it's gonna be obvious that they're there. But if not, then it's not gonna be obvious, you know? The kids looked up. The tilt of their necks following each footfall. Then suddenly, it stopped. Mm. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. A dude! <gasps> Is that... That's the dude. That's the, the other dude. I can't remember his name. He was, like, a little anxious, though. He had the apple. I think it's that guy. It looks like his silhouette because he's got the glasses on. Hello? A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Anyone down there? The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. Thump. Yo, who? Thump. I'm not here to hurt anyone. I'm just here to help. Just... At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Huh? Guess it's nothing. Oh no. 
Rolo, no. An intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. But he wouldn't be able to see that chastising look. Rolo, don't. It was too late. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. No! He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Flaming chicken coop! With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. Oh my goodness. Rolo? Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Uh-oh. Well, I didn't know if, if I had it in me. But there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rolo, that was awesome. Wait, did you just kill that person? Luca scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. I don't think he killed him. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. How are you guys seeing all of this right now? I guess maybe you would have gotten used to the dark from being in there for a few minutes. You sure clobbered him good, Rolo. He, he's knocked out cold. Damn. As flicked back on the light. Luca and Rolo both gasped in stereo. Yeah, it is. It's that dude. Mr. Tolliver, that's his name. Chapter 7. Wow. The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. Yeah. Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with <sighs> rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain. They couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. No. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop, hard cop. Uh, good cop, chill cop. <laughs> They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. I'll handle this. Just gotta play it cool. Luca walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. Was that supposed to wake him up? <laughs> Golly, I sure got my bell rung. He looked over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Sorry, Mr. Tolliver. This was all a big mistake. Luca, what's going on here? Why do you have me strapped down? No one's fault, really. Rolo just got a little startled. Rolo's here? Rolo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Yeah, why did you hide? Well, all right. Mistakes happen. You kids gave old Hiram a good scare. Let me... Let's just get me out of these ropes and call it even. Luca glanced over to Rollo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Mr. Tolliver, why are you in my grand's basement? I'm here to help, of course. Help with what? What's my grand up to? If you'll just cut me loose, I can show you. How do I know... We can trust you. Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca, have I ever done wrong by you? No. Not that we know of. And since your grand moved to town, haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah. So why would I turn my back on your family now? It's just... All this stuff seems pretty weird. A board with names of people from town... An archive of my dad's old disturbing patient notes? Luca gestured to the corner. Barrels of explosives? I can explain everything. You just need to untie me. I wouldn't do that. You kids deserve an explanation. I mean, that's true, and I don't think that he's a bad guy, but I do think that he would try and, like, knock all of us out and put us somewhere to keep us from, like, potentially hurting ourselves, you know what I mean? Luca looked again to Rolo and Beck. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Don't do it! Ah, oh, too late. Gently rubbed his wrists. That's a good lad. This will all make sense in time. Look at him backing away. You sneaky, sneaky motherfucker. Perceptively toward the stairs as he spoke. Ooh, you sneaky mofo. You see, this town has secrets, Luca. A very dark past indeed. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. A pass that must be brought he to punctuated his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Justice! Right? Light! Oh, brought to light. Got it. Ah, oh, he locked him in. Son of a he darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. I told you you shouldn't have untied. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. He just locked us down here. Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. That was dumb. I wasn't lying, you know. 
This is for your own good. You kids just keep tight down there. And let the adults handle this. They look to be wilted, it's what I figured would happen. Wait, cool, huh? Not now, Beck. They heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, <sighs> hoping to conjure some ah. magical words to make this right. That's what I said. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. <gasps> well, 69. we certainly aren't going to find a grand <laughs> resolution to our tale locked in a basement. No way, no how. Back to the drawing board. Um, did we want to, were there other options now in any of these things? No, still just flight. Okay, so yeah, we're going to stay here and we're going to be hard. We're gonna be a hard cop. They'd run the classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. Rollo brandished a steely gaze. I've got this. Read about it a hundred times. <laughs> Boom. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. Well, 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 Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. <laughs> Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. Mr. Tolliver? Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Do the light thing again. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. I said, Mr. Tolliver. He grabbed the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. He recoiled with a muddled, weary squint. I mean, yeah, he's got light in his face. What in the world? The chair wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Who? Who's there? Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. I'll be asking the questions here, punk! <laughs> now hold on, let's just calm down. Oh, I am calm. Calm as a carrot and dirt. As for you, looks like you're sweating. The doubtful expression on Beck and Luca's faces transformed into awe. <laughs> we can do this my way, or... Well, let's just say I've never needed another way. Rollo, hitting his stride, was now channeling every detective trope his memory could recall. He slammed the table again. Now dance! No, 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 no. What? I don't even... Mr. Tolliver's voice became desperate. <laughs> he was nearly in tears. Poor dude. No, 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 You've tied no, 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 me down. How on earth could I dance? <laughs> dance with your mouth, punk. <laughs> Spill the beans. <laughs> What are you doing poking around this house? No, 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 no. Hey, I'm here to help Juniper. No, 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 no. To make sure everything's ready. Oh, so you're in cahoots with Gran? Gran? No, no. Mr. Tolliver was in a daze. Now more confused than ever. I'm gonna help her blow up the festival, eh? No, 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 no. Blow up the festival? No, no, no. Good lord. He shook his head, feeling more and more dizzy. No, 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 no. no, no you've got it all wrong. No, no. Where is she now? No, 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 no. She's headed to the source. The source? No. Source? What's the source? That's what I'm wondering. The dad talked about it in the dream. That's- it's His where- faded to a whisper. What is it? No, no, no. The town began. No, 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 no. Where it all began. What is Operation Sparkplug? With that, Mr. Tolliver passed out cold. Oh shit. <laughs> Rollo swung around with a repentant grimace. Well. Damn, Rollo. I think you went a little too hard on him. Yeah, dude, you made him freak out and pass out. What did he say about the source? It's where the town began? We need more information. Yeah, but we better not push Mr. Tolliver any further. Is there anyone else who might know more? What about the, mu the history museum? It just got set up for the festival. Nah, that tent was put up by the Valentines. Everything they do is just a bunch of fluff to glorify themselves. Is there anything more reliable? The library. If there's any information about this source thing, Kato can help us find it. Let's go get some answers. Yeah! Kato, what's up, bro? This is a dang nice library, isn't it? It's really nice. Thanks, we work hard on it. 
Are you a little young to be a librarian? That's what I was just wondering. I was like, yeah, he's he's the only one working here. <laughs> oh, uh... Kato hung out here so much, eventually they gave him a, a set of keys. I just keep an eye on the place for Mrs. Novak sometimes. They got you working for free? It's quiet, and I get access to all the books I can read. Yeah, that's his payment. What more could a person want? Hopefully they pay him when he's older, though. Fair enough. What can I do for all for you all? We need a favor. I already told you in Rolo. I can't put you any higher on the waitlist for the next Hank Atomic. And if you're here with what with more candy, I'll have you know I can't be bought. Call it a personal code of conscience. Actually, we're looking to do some research. Now you're speaking my language. What are you looking for? That's the thing, we sort of don't know. What do you got on the history of the town? Hmm. There's a county record archives. What's in those? Births, deaths, newspaper clippings, stuff like that. Pretty boring reading. But they do go all the way back to when the town was founded. Great, we'll start there. Damn, we're gonna go through a bunch Chapter of eight. shit, aren't we? Page 69 again? Six feet under, three towns over. What? The kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's Three towns utterance. over? Luca tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement, but his focus wavered. Explosives, messages hidden in jam, dossiers on various town figures, and a corkboard threaded with photos. Grand was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. But the old map with the symbol of explosives in Town Square made that difficult. What if they're trying to destroy the source or something that's infecting the source? That eventually freezes everything over? As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. I mean, I, I get the feeling Gran is not the bad guy here. If I have to read any more records, my eyeballs are gonna pop. We have to keep digging. If I dig another word, I'm gonna end up in one of these uh, in one of these asinine death records. Rollo Cotter lived a full and wonderful life, till he read so much boring crud that his brain oozed out of his ears. That's what school feels like sometimes. Certain subjects in school, I definitely felt that. History was one of them. <laughs> I'm not good at history. Um, if you've got a, a bleh, if you've got a better idea, spit it out. My brain is going to sleep right now. I'm so tired. You sound like my sister. My sleep schedule's been, like, everywhere, all over the place. I'm not sleeping well, so I'm very tired. <laughs> Keep pushing your luck, pal. And it won't be boring county records that kill you. Oh, shit! I'll put you in the obituaries myself. Rolo muttered under his breath. <laughs> you tell him, girl. Your county record. <laughs> really? That's the best you've got? <laughs> That's that's the comebacks that I would say. <laughs> the, you're a county record. <laughs> that's so me. That's what I do. I do that for fun just because I'm like, no, you. <laughs> when I'm done with you, you'll be a foot the footnote in history. Just like slammed her finger down on the open page before glancing down to read. Jay Hartford here. I'd love to see you try. Hey, hey, hey. No fighting in the library. We're all a little tired here. Let's just take a minute Something and... tickled the back of Luca's mind. Wait, what was that last name? Wait, what was that name back? In the obit? Jay Hartford? From the Brookville Tribune eight years ago. That can't be right. What is it? Jay Hartford. That's my grand's last... Wait, what? That's my grand's name, Juniper Hartford. Maybe there are two Jay Hartfords? Mrs. Hartford is survived by her young daughter, E. Hartford. My mom's name is Eleanor. Okay, this is getting creepy. If your gran is six feet under, three towns over, then who am I living with? Is it the mom? I, I swear it's the mom, just old. The question hung in the air. Bro, what? This is crazy. I love this. <laughs> All right, gang, I gotta close up for the night. Beck rubbed her eyes. Dude, how late is it? Almost ten. Ah, oh, crap. Pa's gonna kill me. I gotta go. 
Yeah, my parents will be worried sick. Okay, let's meet up as early as we can at the festival tomorrow. Which is the last day. That's when shit goes down. What are you gonna do about the unconscious man in your basement? I'll think of something. What are we gonna do with Gran? Luca's heart was pounding as he approached the house. Yeah, dude. If he was lucky, Gran, or whoever it was, hadn't gotten back yet. And of course, there was Mr. Tolliver tied up and unconscious in the basement. Dealing with him would be the first order of business. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves before entering. Oh shit! Gran's home! He held perfectly still, tempering his breath and to listen closely. She was asleep. His only hope was that she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's still open. We didn't even close it? G oh no! Oh my god. Oh no. Mr. Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? Maybe he woke up, escaped from his bindings, and left without a trace? Or maybe Gran knew everything. Could be either. What do I do? Luca's hungry stomach groaned. Not realizing it, he'd gone the entire day without eating. Okay, I can figure this out. Just need a little brain food. Luca rushed over to the pile of jam jars, unscrewed one, and shoveled a handful into his mouth. No, that's so dumb! I'm afraid your jam delivery will be delayed. He flipped the lid to read the label. Mr. Nuncreed, heh <laughs> heh. Okay, now I can think. So if Gran knows we tied up Mr. Tolliver, I'm screwed. If she doesn't know, then I need to play it cool. I guess the only option is to go to bed and act as if nothing is wrong. Gran will think Mr. Tolliver finished what he was sent to do and left when he was done. You shouldn't have eaten that jam, dude. If that's like the special jam, also, I can't believe we're not closing that door. I mean, it's just why- OH SHIT! Gran? Okay, stick to the plan. Go to bed and play it cool. Oh my god. Dude, I'm so nervous. As climbed the final stair, the emotion of the day dragged heavily on him. With each consecutive step, his legs weakened. I mean, I know Gran's not bad, but like, getting- just getting caught- his stride began to doing falter. shit that that you're not supposed to be doing and knowing stuff you're not supposed to know is so terrifying. He tried to grab for the railing to steady himself. Something was wrong. Come on, legs. Just a few more steps. Luca groaned and tried to move. Shouldn't have eaten the jam, dude. There's something in that jam specifically for Nuncreed. Ah! Oh! He ate he ate the bad jam. <laughs> His limbs might as well have been bolted to the ground. Oh my god. Lips, he mumbled just before falling asleep. The germ. I mean, either way, we did go to sleep, so I guess it worked out, but like... Sweet boy. What did you get yourself into? Sorry, Gran. We got ourselves into a... A jam. <laughs> Rest now, and let me handle everything. Oh my gosh. She knows. Chapter 9. A speech to end all speeches. Yeah? Luca awoke to find himself face down in bed. He moaned into his pillow. Why would Gran drug him? I mean, she didn't mean to drug you. Or rather, why was she trying to drug Mr. Nuncreed? Because he's a creep, and he's on the bad side, I think. Shaking the questions from his woozy head, Luca snapped back to the matter at hand. The festival! Yeah, I was gonna say, dude, like, don't eat the jam that's part of the secret conspiracy stuff, because you don't know what the fuck is in there. You have no idea. Is it still open? Wow, I can't believe it's still open. What happens if we go down? Is Gran gonna be in there? Nope. Wow, Gran's just leaving it open? Willy-nilly? <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool, I guess. Trusts us enough to... <laughs> I guess she's like, yeah, they he already fucking knows. <laughs> Beacon Pines! Oh, friends! Where have you been? I, uh... Gran put something in the jam. Yeah, we know. Secret messages for secret conspirators. 
Not this one. The one intended for Mr. Nuncreed. Put me to sleep. Whoa, ho, ho. Sly devil. Sly. <laughs> That's cute. I think she's trying to remove him from the equation. He might be in danger. Have you found anything? We looked around but haven't seen anything odd. Your gran is nowhere to be found. But Mr. Nuncreed is just loafing around waiting for the speech. What speech? Mayor Gus just got up to the podium. Everyone is gathering at the stage. Let's get moving. Let's do. Oh shit. What's gonna happen? Look at the cute little bunnies! I didn't even see them! Oh, they're so cute! Anyways, sorry, what? Wiped his brow, okay. Ahem. Is this thing... Oof. That noise. Uh, hello, Beacon Pines. I'm Augustus Valentine, your mayor, and I suppose you already know that. Um, oh yes, before we get started. I just wanted to take a moment to recognize someone who couldn't be here today. This town wouldn't be where it is today without my father, Sharper Valentine. So I thought we could begin with a round of applause befitting such a great man. Oh, such weak applause. Even that's more than the old codger deserved. Gus cleared his throat and awkwardly loosened his tie. Right, where was I? Yeah, that poor dude did have, like, such a hated father. Without even any proof. Like, they're all just hating on him because he sold the fertilizer, but it could have been anything. We don't even know what it was. But something something that's going on here is related to the foul harvest, I think. William Kerr bounded on the stage with the energy of a preacher at a big tent revival. That is that means he's not to be trusted at all. If you didn't know before, then now you know. <laughs> Gus Valentine, everyone. He gave Gus a hearty slap on the back and motioned him off the stage. Let's hear it for our mayor. Sad. What a great turnout. Ah oh, heck, I didn't prepare anything. But I suppose I could say a few words. Would be a shame to waste such a beautiful podium. Mr. Kerr pulled a thick stack of note cards out from his vest. Oh, you didn't prepare anything, eh? Community, conviction, commitment. These are things we celebrate at Perennial Harvest. For us, these are the pillars of, a, of the bridge to a better tomorrow. But I think it's time to add a new pillar. Change. Change is a powerful thing. It's exonerable, unavoidable, and undeniable. Inexorable? Is that what it actually was? I can't read. <laughs> I am daggum thankful for it. Change is the reason we're all together today. It's hard for me to believe that it was only four years ago when fate brought me here. Wow, you've been here for four years? A simple business trip which brought me to a small town which would which would change my life forever. Mr. Kerr took a moment to survey the crowd. You know what? He wiped away a single tear. Uh-huh. From the second I set foot in Beacon Pines, something about this place has held me captive. You see, change represents opportunity. It represents potential. It was change that helped me recognize the potential of this place. To see that the people of this town, despite suffering great loss, still held on to the things that made them special. He thumped the podium to emphasize each word. Wow, he's really an actor. Community, conviction, commitment. Change. Mr. Kerr nodded confidently, biting his lip. The crowd was silent in rapt attention. Fate made a perfect match that day. Nothing is more important to you all than community. And Perennial Harvest is a community first and foremost. I don't think they are. Mr. Kerr methodically made eye contact with each section of the crowd. The only way you made it through the foul harvest was an unmistakable, unshakable conviction. A conviction that a better tomorrow was just over the horizon. Perennial Harvest was founded on the conviction that we are that horizon. This festival is a symbol of our commitment to each other. His voice began to build to a crescendo. Oh, boy, he likes to talk. We now walk hand in hand into a future we will shape together. And that is what change is all about. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I'm tickled pink that we will be making that choice together. How great is that? Just imagine what we can accomplish. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Frozen stuff happening? What was that? The crowd began to look around nervously. What, 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 what? Don't worry, a little thunder isn't going to ruin this day. Everyone remain calm. Mr. Kerr quickly flicked through his note cards. Where was I? Through all of my travels, I've learned one true thing. One always reaps what they sow. We have all planted a lot of good in this town. And so, it is with happy heart that I can proclaim... 
raised his hands up to the heavens. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Our harvest awaits. Ice. Holy shit. Damn, Daniel! At that moment, a merciless wall of impossibly cold air ripped What the heck the is ground, happening? Instantly freezing everyone and everything it touched. For a man like William Kerr, this was a fitting way for things to end. On a stage, with an entire town frozen in rapt attention for the rest of time. The end. There's that ice again! I know, right? I think we're getting close. It comes along and ruins everything. Maybe we should just quit? No. Maybe you should just close the book, walk away, and never think of me again. No, I... I so drama. Much drama. We've got a little closer this time. We just need to try again. Yeah, Please. we've got plenty of choices, dude. Okay, so we can be sly. Is there anything else that's new? Just flight and sly. Okay, so let's be sly, I guess. Good cop, sly cop. They'd run the classic good cop, sly cop. This is so interesting and weird. Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. Ah, it's Beck's turn. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. What? What's going on here? You're you're that modal girl, Modwill. Please call me back. Sorry about all this. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. It seems there's been a mix-up. You see, I'm down here for the same reason you are. Juniper sent you here? Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Gran. Wow, she's sneaky. This was gonna be easy. You know how Juniper is with her precautions. Operation Sparkplug has us all on edge. I guess she thought you needed some backup. But she sent a child? What better way to avoid prying eyes? Who would suspect a kid? I suppose that makes sense. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. That had to be uncomfortable. A little, yeah. But you understand. We never know who to trust in this town. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Oh, yeah, he got bumped. Very true. So it turns out we're both here to... Beck twirled her hand, as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Destroy the evidence. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Yep, the old gal is nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. <laughs> ah, she sure is. Can't blame her, though. If anyone were to find out that we're going to destroy the source... Well, we both know how bad that might be. I was right. They are the, the explosives are for the source. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. Was on a roll now, or down there. Playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. Dude, she's she's she is sly. She's slick. You're sure you can finish this up on your own? Juniper trusted me for a reason. You can leave the rest to me. Good. There is one more loose end I'll go work on. Loose end? Oh, it's nothing really. The other day I had uh, the radio on scan while restocking the candy shelf. And wouldn't you know it, I intercepted an odd phrase in a perennial harvest transmission. Underground secrets. That's ominous. I think it might be a password, but Juniper dismissed it. Said it wasn't mission critical. What's the password for? We don't know. So we have a password and nowhere to put it. It's gotta mean something, right? Good thinking. You should probably go work that out. I've got this under control. That's a relief. Between you and me, this basement gives me the willies. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. Yeah, I can't believe he's not more suspicious. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. Oh my gosh! You guys catch that? Sure did. This whole time, Mr. Tolliver's had a candy shelf. But he- <laughs> but all he ever sells us is apples! Beck blinked slowly in disappointment. <laughs> She's like, are you fucking kidding? The password, Rollo. Well, sure, but once things are back to normal, I'll be having a word with Mr. Tolliver about that candy shelf. Fine, in the meantime, I've got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. He said he heard a password on the radio. 
any good spy transmission uh, is never what it seems. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. We just need to find the hidden meaning. Hmm, okay. What's another word for underground? Buried, covered? Could it be a cover-up? Maybe it's one of those letter is a number thingies. So U would be 21. N would be 14. D would be... Ooh! It's an anagram! Nun Creed's Drugstore. What? Really? What was it? Underground secrets? Luca and Beck looked at Rolo with amazement. Wow! Rolo, that was incredible. Well, it's either that or Kren's nude rug store. Yeah, I think you were right the first time. How did you do that? What can I say? I love ciphers. Well, I guess we know where to go next. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. I, I mean, I didn't have it in front of me, but like, I don't think I would have seen that. All right, time to go get some drugs. <laughs> oh shit! Hello. You scared me half to death. Sorry. You kids haven't seen Mr. Tolliver around, have you? Nope. He's got me waiting around like this, like the last slice of pie. I swear that man would be late to his own funeral. All right, well, you guys are meeting up. That's interesting. Uh, to the drugstore. Let's a go. Oh shit. You're late, Augustus. Sorry, sister. Oh, they're siblings. Okay. Was caught up with work. Work? You? I had a few more details to lock down for the festival. Oh, what do you have to report? Uh, what is this insipid town festival really about? I think... I looked around nervously. I think Mr. Curry really does just want to do something good for the town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I don't- I don't- I don't think so. I didn't pull strings installing you as mayor so that you could make friends. Your job is to help me figure out what current perennial harvest's true intentions are with this town. Yeah, because it's- I- I think they're hiding shit. We have a responsibility. This is our father's town. Was. Excuse me? This was our father's town. He's gone, Eris, and he isn't coming back. Father left us with nothing but problems. Mr. Kerr came here and offered to help us. We accepted that help. We didn't agree to them turning Father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground. That's just a temporary arrangement. The glow can be seen from our damn backyard. They are dumping their nasty little secrets on us. When all this inevitably- when this all inevitably goes wrong, who do you think will be blamed? Paris's cry hung in the air. Yeah. We have a new choice to make now, sister. This town is going to change whether we like it or not. <laughs> I get narratively why people call their siblings like brother or sister or whatever, but as someone who has siblings, I've never once like walked up to my brother and been like, what's up, brother? How's it hanging, sister? You know, I'm just like, what up, bruh? <laughs> You know what I'm sis? <laughs> like, I've, I, saying brother and sister, like calling your brother and your sister brother and sister is so formal and weird. So like, whenever I see it in dialogue, I'm just like, that's, why not just be like sis? It's, it's so much more casual. It's so weird to be very not casual with your siblings. I don't know. Uh, this town is going to change whether we like it or not. Are we going to choose to be a part of that future or be forgotten in the past? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus. But you will always just be a Gus. Good night, Eris. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. It's getting late, children. <clears throat> yes, it is. Uh, book lady, you have anything? Any clues? Yeah? Knowledge, he spat with a sneer. There exists a gulf between knowing something and being able to do a damn thing about it. Humph. I do hate when the villain makes a good point. Really? I love when the villain makes a good point. Where am I going? I completely forgot where I was going. We weren't going to the history thing, were we? No, we're going to the drugstore, that's right. Yo, what up, kid? Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. Hmm. Hey, Solomon. We're looking for Mr. Nuncreed. Is he still in there? I'm afraid not. Then where'd you get that candy from? You might say we have an arrangement. Solomon 
shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. Nom, 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 nom. Sometimes it's the small pleasures in life. I thought we might not always have family to rely on. Or though we might not always have family to rely on, licorice has never let me down. Well, I can't say licorice would be my first choice, but whatever floats your boat. You can tell a lot about a person by their choice of confection. Oh yeah, I guess. I like sour gobs. I'm certain you do. <laughs> I always wondered why Mr. Nuncreed kept the licorice in stock. You must eat enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn loyalty. For some, it's as easy as cold hard cash. For you, it's licorice. Let's break in. Well, he's right, it's locked. Break in. There's gotta be more clues. Are we gonna go th to the telephone booth? Does that, like, connect to it? Okay, let's see. <sighs> um... Phone booth? I knew it! Have you ever seen anyone actually use this thing? Besides Mr. Nuncreed? No. Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. That is not a normal phone booth. It's got, like, a blinky keypad. Why would there be a, bink a blinky keypad? Creed... <laughs> Kren's new drugstore! I mean... Underground secrets! The password! Flung open the door, and they all squeezed in. Yeah, squeeze in there. Dang. Alright, let's see here. Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. Underground... Secrets. What if it's wrong? Sounds like that did something. Great, now what? I guess we Ah the inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Oh my gosh. Even the space to panic. They closed their eyes, held their breath, and accepted their fate. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. Oh, we're finally going to see where we went that first time. Ended up, but at least it was solid ground. Oh my gosh. The Tubes air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine. Okay, it's very clean. I knew it. You knew that there was a secret hub full of strange tubes under a phone booth? Of course I did. Didn't I say that? No. I definitely thought it. Luca, do you remember when I said how cool it would be if that trans-dimensional conduits from Hank Atomic Issue 12 were real? Rolo, at one point or another, you've said that about every technology ever discussed in Hank Atomic. That's why I'm such a good predictor! It looks like each of these has something written on them. Oh yeah? Like what? Mining Operations Alpha. You guys have mines here? Not that I know of. This town is all farms and fertilizer. And a series of tubes. Can you imagine only being there for like two or three days, and like on your second and or third day is when you start getting into shenanigans with these strange boys? <laughs> How crazy. Like I just, I just moved here and now I'm involved in conspiracy stuff. Paul always says you can you can only trust a miner up to the point when they hit gold. Not sure how that wisdom applies in this exact situation. That's the thing about Pa, you don't always realize what he means until it's too late. Alright. Perennial Harvest Main Office. Ooh. Uh, that's where my mom works. What does she do? Science stuff. She's in is she involved in all of this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? Yeah, I I feel like maybe she doesn't fully know what's happening, but if she does, then bad on you, Mom. True. Valentine Fertilizer Warehouse. Ooh, okay. Isn't that where you almost got snatched? Yeah. Why would Perennial Harvest have a tube going to the old Valentine place? This is starting to feel like something big. I mean, yeah, dude. And it has the broken hazmat suit! Um, this suit has a broken mask. Dude, was he the one? So, have we found our mystery warehouse keeper? We've at least found their hazmat suit. If it walks like an uncreed and talks like an uncreed, let's not jump to conclusions. Just saying. Yeah, that's what I'm just saying too. What if it was an uncreed? That's a lot of buttons. Stand aside, Earthlings. I've read enough Hank Atomic to know my way around sci fi tech. Eeny, meeny, miny. Uh-oh. 
Is that blowing it out? Rolo, what did you do? Nothing. I didn't even mow yet. What was that? Hide. Where? There's nothing but weird tubes down here. Just get back. Yeah, what is it? Shit. 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 Awesome. You all need to come with me now. We aren't going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers. Mr. Underground Secrets. I told them it was an absurd password. But they love anything that makes them feel clever. They who? That's no matter. If I can keep you hidden until after the festival, it might be able to save your skins. Or I might be able to save your skins. We don't care about our skins. Hold on now, I like my skin. This all stops now, Nun Greed. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. Hmm. You sound just like him. The dad? Who? Walt. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know, your father and I were friends back before... He gestured toward the strange tubes. Ugh, <sighs> all of this. That's a lie. It's true. I used to bounce you on my knee. What happened? Same thing that always happens. Reality, complications, life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright-eyed pharmacist. Both hell-bent on helping folks. So you were his sidekick? No. We were partners. He helped the patients and I helped them. Yep, total sidekick. Creed let out a growl of a sigh. Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone to know this. One day, Sharper Valentine comes to us. Says he's got an opportunity. He'd found something he didn't quite understand. And he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. My dad said no. Your father and I both believed in helping people. But the thing I could never get him to understand was... It's a lot easier to help others if you help yourself now and then. Classic sidekick into villain plotline. Walt loved being righteous almost more than he loved his family. He was wrong about one thing, though. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes one time to Sharper Valentine, he'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's dead and gone. He shook his head wistfully. Sharper's long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. Is there a point to this sob story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs to needs doing. Nuncree took a menacing step towards the children. Oh, shit. I tried to keep you safe. I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this. But you forced my hand. Luca began to laugh. What? You really don't know. My gran isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Juniper? Dude, I, I wouldn't tell him that. Seems like she's planning on crashing the town's party. She's going to disrupt the festival? Why would she- the color drained from Nuncrete's face. How does she know? Apparently she knows a lot of things. What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we've busted into today. And honestly, hers is way cooler. <laughs> She's got maps and explosives and bad intentions, big man. Nuncrete grabbed Luca by the shoulders. Oh fuck. His eyes were frantic. You need to tell me what she's going to do right now. She doesn't understand what, what it is she's messing with. I, uh... Tell me now, she's in danger, boy. I don't know. She had a map with a mark on the fountain in Town Square. The fountain? But why would... A jolt of realization struck Mr. Nuncreed. She knows about the source. What the heck is the source? If she tries to destroy the source, it could catalyze and... Dear God, she's going to freeze us all. <gasps> is that what's happening? Okay, bye. <laughs> Look at those ears. You all need to run. Run where? Away. As far away from this town as you can get. Head west and don't look back. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love how you just like cannonballed backwards. That did not go how I expected. So, we're totally following him, right? Totally. See you on the other side. Whee! You good? Yep. Woohoo! I love this town. <laughs> wow. Chapter 8. 
Yo, we're making progress. Truth. Okay, okay, okay. But I've been doing this for an hour, so this is a good place to stop, I think. Um, I don't know how much longer we have. I, apparently, I'm on a good path. The other path, I have no idea what's happening there. But, um, this game is going for longer than I thought it would, which is fine. It just means I have to shift some stuff around in my schedule. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna end this episode here. Thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you're enjoying it. And, uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye!